Hi everybody, uh, this is your uh, world's best video streamer uh, coming to you uh, today to do some quick porting. Um, if you saw a stream like three days ago, you'll understand why I'm the world's best streamer. It was perfect in every way. And uh, I expect the, the same thing to happen today, aka I'm going to screw everything up. Uh, it's great to see uh, a lot of familiar names out there in the chat. Good to see you all. Uh, oddly, Timbot Wilson says Centipede was the first game that um, they made for VIC-20. Well, that's pretty cool. I don't think I was that advanced uh, back when I got my first 8-bit computer by far. Um, so I found this really accurate version of Centipede uh, this morning and I fiddled around with it a little bit and I think I'll be able to stand this up pretty quickly on tilt 5. So I did a couple things in advance to make sure that it was possible. So I uh, pulled over the project, I brought in the tilt 5 plugins, I brought in Mixcast so we can take a look at it and all of that worked and then um, tried a little bit with uh, controls to make sure that it didn't have anything funky with the controls. And then I deleted it all, and so we'll try to recreate it from scratch. Oddly says, Kidney would have had lost their minds over this. Yeah, same. I mean, the tools that we have today, like Unity, to, uh, to make games so quickly, it's, it's pretty amazing. You know, back in the old 8-bit days, you were stuck with Basic, which wasn't too bad if you wanted to do really simple things. But if you wanted to do anything with animation or sprites, it was assembly is really the way you had to do it because basic would be way too slow. So let's take a look at this game uh, real quick and I'll show you where you can get it. It's actually in the description so you can grab it for yourself. Uh, I don't think I'll ever be able to release this, of course, uh, because the, was it Atari? Yeah, whoever owns Atari now would probably come after me with uh, shotguns uh, ablazing but I'll have fun with it, and anyone that wants to replicate it can. So um, here's the game. I'll play it a little bit. It's really difficult as is because it uses WASD and the space bar to fire. It's almost impossible, but I think it's going to play really well using the wand. And so let me click on it here and press, press R. And uh, I was playing it earlier, and this freaking spider is just as difficult as it was in the arcade. I loved this game a lot, but it, it was a freaking spider. Um, it was crazy difficult. Of course, they had to be really difficult so they could make maximum quarters from all of us uh, foolish kids that were addicted to uh, arcades. I think I was quite young when this came out. Um, back in those days, my uh, father wouldn't give me very many quarters to play with. Hey, how's the audio? It seems maybe a little bit loud. Um, oh, actually, it looks like it was muted. Let's try that again. <laughs> Bryce says, don't want to upset the Atari Mafia. That's true. All right, I'm going to mess with the desktop audio here and make sure that you can hear it. Oh, Mad Lad says Hasbro owns Atari now. Uh, that doesn't surprise me at all. Get my hands on the... Oh, this is so hard to play. And those fleas. Um, if I recall right, when you hit the fleas, you have to hit them twice, and the first time you hit them, then they start uh, dropping twice as fast. How's audio? Is that too loud for you all? Okay, it seems like it's okay. Yeah, everyone gives me a hard time about white noise. I tried something a little bit different. I have a little microphone here, but I don't want it like jammed up in my face while I'm doing all of this. All right, uh, let's take a look at the uh, 
the web page that this came from. Get some of this cleared out here. So here is off GitHub the project. Sergey Back uh, made the centipede, did a pretty great job of it. So you can come, you can find the link and go uh, chase it down for yourself if you'd like to build it and play it. Sean says, I did hear most, uh, most say that Atari is now owned by Infograms. Yeah, I don't know, Atari's been passed around so many times. I was joking uh, not too long ago that at some point I'll probably be able to buy Atari myself for like 20 bucks. Because it's probably becoming less of a household name. So this game was done in 2D with 2D sprites, so we, we need to do a little bit of work to make this um, Tilt 5 goodness. Um, let me hit play and come over to the editor. I want to get the editor lined up properly. Alright, so that seems to be front right there. Uh, so it has a 2D camera in here. Uh, we don't need that anymore. Make sure there's no scripts on it that are important, so we'll just delete those out. Joe says it's currently owned by a French company, Atari SA, formerly Infograms. Cool. Um, all right, let's bring in the Tilt 5 plugin. So we'll import that. Import all the Tilt 5 goodness. Yeah, Mad Lad says it's really changed hands a lot, and it's true. It's kind of sad, you know, sometimes I think about Atari, if Time Warner hadn't acquired them, you know, and they kept their kind of early scrappy startup DNA, would they still be around today? Would they be, you know, would Nintendo have taken hold as strongly as they did? You know, would they be a strong player up against you know, Sony and Microsoft. <clears throat> All right, so we got the Tilt 5 plugins in our assets down here. And so all we have to do is just drag in the Tilt 5 prefab. Yep, there's the game board. So it's it's rotated um, the wrong way. We're gonna have to do some rotation on this because the scene is this way and the game board's that way. So I think what I want is I want the the game to be flat on the table, and then we're gonna take all the two D sprites and we're gonna make them tip up at you know thirty degrees or forty five degrees or something facing you, kind of give it a three D feel. Ah, James, tuning in from the Mojave Desert. Did you get any floodwaters out there? So it looks like I need to rotate this along the x-axis. So it looks like it needs to be 90 degrees. And so when you bring in the Tilt 5 prefab, this is a, the gizmo that represents the game board. So right now, typically you want to align things to where the logo is like facing you to start off with. So right now the, the logo is pointing up, so everything would be upside down to me. James says, oh yeah, hopefully it wasn't too much damage. Uh, which axis do I need to rotate? 180? Nope. Wrong axis. 180. What? Wait, what am I not? Oh. 
sorry, let's let's do this again. I want to rotate the game board object 90 degrees. Okay, rotate it. What am I what am I seeing that's weird? Must be a perspective thing that's confusing me. Oh, the axis is really weird. order of operation things thing. there that's better I don't know why I was having trouble with that it might have been just the perspective in the editor so I think I can go 90 negative 90 now all right jeez that took way too long to get aligned so there's our player object down here and then there's the logo aligned One Diet says, I have no idea what's going on, but I was one of the $20 donations 10 years ago. Yes, it's the same project. Thanks for uh, helping out. So you'll get to see the glasses and everything in action. We have a webcam set up here off to the side, this thing down the corner of the screen that you see here called Mixcast. We'll be able to see uh, what the player actually sees. So it composites the, the video. I've been at this for a very, very long time. So right now, um, this is the game board object. I'm going to scale this up. So this is kind of a cool feature. You don't have to scale all the game objects in the, the scene. You can just scale the game board. So I think I want to try to make this multiplayer. I have an idea how we can do it. So you're all moving your little ships around. Um, simultaneously. So what I want to do is um, once I get the first player uh, working then I want to detect if there are any other players attached to your system and then uh, instantiate more uh, little ships. Uh, one D it thanks. Um, I'm glad it's still going along myself. Uh, okay, let's get Mixcast in there so we can see it. So Mixcast is the tool that lets you um, lets you use a generic webcam and you just point it at the game board and then it composites the image. It's not going to look very exciting because if I did this right, it's all going to be just flat in 2D. But I think I can go in, since they're just 2D sprites, I can just go in and write a little script that rotates them say 45 degrees so I'm gonna so Mixcast uh, you can just download this for free and you can add it to all of your projects and their free version just has a little watermark in the corner and if you're a pro user you can pay some nominal fee to get uh, a couple more bells and whistles so just drag this into your your assets and that's all you have to do with this is you don't have to do any work to have the ability to share with Mixcast. So knock on wood, after this we should be able to hit play and see the game show up on the game board. Sorry, I'm going to be drinking a lot of flavored water today because it's like a million degrees here. Maybe I should... Oh, there it is. Oh, yep, it's right 
on the table. <laughs> oh, everything is reversed. Uh, when I push right, it goes left. So I need to, I didn't have it straightforward. So was it 180? Here we go again. Or is it just 90? Zero? Oh no. Where's my logo? Hi, the main Stark. Good to see you. All right, let's try that and see if it's all flip-flopped around. Okay, that's better. When I go push the WASD key left and right. Oh my god, this is so impossible on the keyboard. I can go to a bigger shot and you can see it. Nice, nice. Right, I'll save this before Unity crashes. Hi, the Matthew. Good to see you. For those of you tuning in uh, a little later, we're I found a really cool fan-made um, centipede, one of my favorite games. Loved this in the arcade. So um, let's go after trying to control the ship. Um, so what I want to do to do to control the ship is I want to hold the wand and then have a, a comfortable holding angle. And so I want to have a ray cast coming down off of the wand. And a ray cast in Unity, um, you can determine everything that this ray collides with. So I'm going to do a little a trick that I've done before. I'm going to add kind of a floor to the scene. So there's something to collide with, and then I'm going to add a tag to it so um, I know where I'm colliding with it, and then I'm going to move the character, probably probably move an empty game object to that collision point, and then I'm going to have it kind of linear, linearly, I can't talk today, interpolate uh, the player position towards that. Joe says, uh, Missile Command and Centipede were my favorite trackball games. Yeah, trackball games were so fun. I was, I loved al almost anything trackball. There's an Atari game called Quantum that was never popular, but it's, it's trackball, super fun. And you draw a line, you know, of round objects and you try to trap them. So there's all these particle things floating around and you have to try to trap them within a circle. So it's kind of like a trackball version of um, Kicks. Uh, Bob Darlington says uh, MAME needs to be integrated with this. I agree. There's probably a lot of things that can be pretty cool in MAME. OK, uh, let's, let's get working on the wand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty object. And I'm going to call it wand player one. 
So an empty game object doesn't do anything. It's just a container where we can uh, attach scripts to it, but it does have a transform rotation uh, component to it, and that's going to be handy for us. So if we go to the Tilt 5 prefab and we go to the Tilt 5 manager, this is where you can access all of the players and all of their features, like their wands in particular. I'm going to add another player, so this can be four players. You just click Add. Oh, oddly says Golden T was the most popular trackball um, coin op. Yeah, I could see that. Golden T was pretty good. I wonder how it compares to... There were all those really cool bowling games that I liked too. Oh, Marble Madness. Someone just brought up Marble Madness. That was a great trackball game. We have, um, on Tilt 5, we have kind of a Marble Madness game. Uh, it's called Marbles. Um, and we're working on an editor so you can build all your different levels. It's super fun because you can... The editor, you can have four people editing at once, and then you can hit play, and you can try out your map that you made, and it's a lot of fun. Um, we play it way too much at the office. Anthony says, I loved Millipede on the 2600. Tough to play with the joystick. Yeah, these don't translate well to joystick, but I think with the wand, because it's a motion controller, I think it's going to translate very well. All right, so we made this empty game object in the manager. Uh, we're going to go to player one's wand. And in player one's wand, there's different places you can attach objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that empty game object to the tip of the wand. And so now when I move the wand through the scene, that empty object, its transform and rotation is going to be right at the tip here. And this is going to allow me to use, make a script that uh, does a raycast down to a plane that it'll collide with, and I'll be able to determine that collision point. Oddly says, hey, I saw a stream from about a week ago, someone developing for Tilt 5 in Godot. It was pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty excited that we support Godot, especially with all the Unity um, situation right now, to have a nice alternative that, you know, they won't yank the rug out from underneath you. Okay, I'm going to add in a, a plane inside, just a flat plane that I can collide with. So, oh no, oh no, and it's rotated too. How long is it going to take me to get this rotated right? What did I... I'm just zeroing out some of these default locations to zero, zero, zero. Two seventy. That's just what I need to do. Two seventy. So there's the plane. So this plane has, um, has a mesh renderer on it. I don't want that. So it's got kind of this dark color being rendered. So I can just, so here's the plane and over in the inspector, I can see the mesh renderer. I can just turn that off because I want it to be invisible, but I just want to have this object exist out in the scene so that I can collide with it. So we'll scale that up. Um, was it three? No, it was bigger than three. Actually, yeah, I want the plane bigger because there's probably reasons that you might actually be swinging your wand off of the actual play field and you want your, since the, the little ship is going to try to follow towards it, you don't want to lose tracking. Uh, oddly says uh, Godot is pretty good. I haven't tried it myself. I started watching tutorial videos this week. And it looks, so I'm about a year, year and a half into Unity development, and it looks a lot like Unity to me, um, with just a couple differences, like all of these, like prefabs are nodes, and everything's nodes, 
Um, I think that's something I'm just going to have to get used to. The one thing I thought was pretty cool is um, instead of prefabs, they're like scenes. So you can have, you know, like this Tilt 5 Pro prefab. This is just a prefabrication of a bunch of different pieces. And if I understand right in Godot, you can basically make a scene with a bunch of, uh, I believe, un unnested objects and then bring it into your main scene. As far as I know on Unity, everything has to be kind of nested under, you know, the parent object. Oddly says yes, it has many uh, similarities. Uh, oh, I don't know how to say your name properly. Thago, uh, good to see you. Probably botched it. Okay, um, now I want to tag this, uh, add a tag. So you can tag things in Unity and you can create tags and then like when you collide with them, you can interrogate uh, the list of objects that you've collided with and then find the tag and ignore the ones you don't care about and then do something when you collide. So this is going to be important because we have all these like mushrooms and stuff. I don't want to do anything when I collide with the mushrooms. So I'm just going to call it the floor. And go back to plane. And then up here in the top you can select what it's tagged as. So this plane, which is just at the game board level and where all of the uh, uh, mushrooms and whatnot and the centipede, you know, they're all this, the same height off the game board. I'm going to rename this plane floor. Is that what I want? think so. So now I'm going to utilize ChatGPT to see if it can pull it off. I've really nailed it in these streams the last couple weeks I've been doing this using ChatGPT to do a bunch of the coding for me and uh, it horrifies my coworkers, but I can't uh, complain about the um, the results. Uh, so I want to do one more thing. I'm going to, what do I want? I'm going to do something a little bit, um, simplistic at first. I don't want to get too too complicated. So I'm going to make another game object which is going to be the target location. Um, if I feel a little more comfortable I could probably go right to this whatever the what is this thing called? I could probably go right to this and it's called blaster. Um, I could probably move Blaster directly from, from the script. <laughs> Richard said Roar. Is that a Roar because I'm going to use ChatGPT? Um, I'm going to call this Player1 Target. Actually, no. I'm going to make it a cube or something so we can see it to make sure it's working. This is always the, the devil's in the details for me. Like is uh, when I'm doing the ray cast and I'm trying to move an object to the end of the collision, is it actually working? So this, this target cube just a little cube. I'll call it 
player one target for now. At least we'll be able to see it. Uh, at least Anthony agrees with me that it's genius to use chat GPT. Blendinator says, yeah, GPT is a great tool. I find it's better than trying to search Stack Overflow. I could spend 30 minutes just trying to find like how to do one simple thing. And there's like 50 different you know, people grandstanding about the proper way to do it. And ChatGPT may not do the most efficient or elegant, but it just gets the job done. All right, let's fire up ChatGPT. I already told uh, ChatGPT to think like a senior Unity developer with good go coding practices and commented code, and then it blatted out something to prove that it could be a good Unity coder. Um, a, a friend of mine said that you, if you prompt it that way, it kind of knows what type of coder you want it to be because sometimes when you're using ChatGPT and you're feeding a bunch of stuff into it, it can go off into the weeds it's like, okay, we're bad coders now and we're just going to start doing naughty things. Yeah, oddly says ChatGPT Chat doesn't yell at me. Uh, yeah, that's true. It doesn't mock you either, like the internet does. <laughs> All right, um, so we got to prompt this thing right. So uh, generate a script that will be attached to a game object. And raycasts to objects in the scene uh, with, um, I want to say this. Hey, Bobcat. Um, Okimo says, I feel like when it comes to coding, ChatGPT will help you get something done, but if you want to learn what you are doing and why it isn't good, that's probably true. Although I think I've learned a lot from ChatGPT. I don't lean on it nearly as much. Uh, let's see. Check all objects the ray cast collides with and compare the tags if the tag matches then move a user defined um, game object to the collision location. Um, let's see. I'm going to say user defined tag. That way, hopefully it'll generate code so that it, it's all public variables and you can set it inside the editor. Generate a script that will be attached to a game object. Oh, and I want to set angle. Um, with a user defined raycast angle, angle in X, Y, X, Y, and Z. I don't know why I'm hitting space so much. All right, fingers crossed.
Certainly, below is the C-sharp script that fulfills your requirements, does it? It attaches to a game object and performs a ray cast based on user-defined angles in the X, Y, and Z directions. The script checks the tags of all collided game objects, and if the tag matches the user-defined tag, it moves the specified game object to the collision location. The script is also commented for clarity. Thank you. So let's take a look at it. I wonder if I can control plus this so you can see it a little better. Wendy, it says, sounds like I need to play with chat GPT. Well, I'm, depending on how badly um, th these scripts work out today, I may convince you or may make you go running for the hills. Uh, so it's taking in a vector 3 raycast angle. That looks good. So we should be able to set X, Y, and Z angles coming off the tip of the wand. Uh, nice. It lets me choose the distance that the raycast is going to go. So in, I, I imagine in complicated scenes you don't want a raycast to be calculated out to like way out into the distance you might just burn up a lot of compute like hitting a lot of objects you don't care about um, so it's 10 10 unity units and it's taking a, str a string in of the target name so that'll be floor um, and then it's a public game object that we can assign which is the object to move that's the cube that I put into the scene So an update, it's just calling perform raycast, this function, okay. Create the rotation based on the user defined angle. Okay, so it's making a quaternion with the raycast angle. Um, So, okay, it's creating the ray cast from the transform position, which is the empty game object hooked to the tip of the wand, uh, with the rotation forward, times the rotation forward. So this little bit I see a lot. I don't always understand what's happening here, but this looks familiar to me. Then it makes a list of everything that it hits. And then, oh, uh, for the folks that were hanging out with me the other day, they're gonna love this. Um, we had a similar piece of code that was just a regular for loop. This one is for each um, loop this time. And hey, Evil Cupra, good to see you. Uh, CL says, I just wanted to say your channel has been a big inspiration for me throughout my degree. Uh, well, that's really cool. Uh, what are you studying? Okay, so this is going to iterate through everything that we hit with the ray cast, and then if collider compare tag equals our string that we're passing in, then we move the transform position to the hit point, which is part of each of the hits um, and then it breaks up. Oh, this is convenient. Uncomment this to draw a ray in the editor. Actually, I want, this looks good. I want a actual a line renderer from the uh, transform position of the wand, wand tip down to the board. So add a line renderer. CL says, right now I'm working on a radio telescope for my thesis. That's cool, studying electrical engineering. So that's pretty hardcore stuff, making those uh, amplifiers that are extremely low noise. Is it gonna be uh, cryogenically cool? Hey, Railsbird, good to see you. 
uh, okay, I wanted to draw a line actually in the game. Up here it gave a nice piece of code that I could uncomment that would just show in the editor, but I think this is going to be handy actually in the game. Add a line renderer between the between the um, transform position of the game object with the script and the hit point. TL says it's not uh, cryogenically cooled. Uh, let's make sure. Sometimes when I use ChatGPT and you ask it to add something, it can like lose its mind and do uh, change the original code. So I'm looking at this. It looks the same so far. Yeah, so it's adding a line renderer. And is it adding it? Oh yeah, at start it adds. Oh, do I have to add the line renderer? We'll see. I may have to add the line renderer to the. Let's see what it says here. Make sure the line renderer component is attached to the game object. There's a way that you can make it automatically put it. Oh, required component type of line renderer. I think this line that it added is just going to automatically add it to the game object. All right, I think this is going to work. So now we have to go over to Unity and we have to name this exactly the same thing as the class. So it's Raycast Controller. So I'll copy the code. Hey, fun guest, good to see you again. Oddly says, AKA AI makes up stuff. It's called hallucination, yeah. It seems to do pretty good with. Oh, I already forgot the name. Oh, it's Raycast Controller with a capital. Raycast Controller. So we're going to create a new script, and this is on the wand player one. This is the thing that moves around with the tip of the wand. Uh, DRMR says, I feel that actually writing the code is faster than telling GPT to write it for you. It's true. I probably could have stumbled through this and done it because I've done it enough times like manually and having chat GPT do it. But normally I'm not like going as methodically through than um, when I'm using ChatGPT by myself, but I figured it's helpful to actually look at it closer, you know, before I just shotgun it in. I'm more f more likely to shotgun things in when I'm by myself. Okimo says they do their best work while hallucinating. It's true. Like when I do circuit board layout, I like to be a, a little buzzed from a, a nice drink. I don't know why, but I just uh, do better layout. No errors. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to make some guesses. I don't know which axis is right. I think it's going to be, because if I look at up here, x is this direction up here. I'm going to be holding the wand over the game board that direction. I think that I want to tip it down. Uh, I'm going to start at 30 degrees, tip down.
I'm going to go 100 because I don't know the world units really at this point. It doesn't matter too much because we're not going to have a ton of stuff in here. Although it might be kind of cool to have some kind of visual effect under the bottom of the game board. Blendinator says, friends don't let friends drink in chat GPT code. Probably a good idea. Uh, so the tag name, so I want to put the tag name of the floor. I can't remember if it was lowercase or uppercase, so I better check lowercase. So floor. And then uh, the target, which is that cube. This is the object that's going to move. Uh, anyone want to make bets whether it works or not? Uh, DRMR um, said, too bad about this Unity fiasco this week. Hope to, we see Tilt 5 support for other engines. So uh, we support Unreal, we support Godot, and then we have a native SDK. So if you have a standalone application. So the Godot folks integrated it themselves using our native SDK. But it is kind of a bummer because there's just so many games on Unity like things like this that could be ported over pretty easily. All right, let's see if it works. Well, <laughs> almost. It's, uh, let me uh, load up the bigger view for you all. So it's actually tipped backwards from the wand. So it's probably negative 30 degrees. And that's a really big uh, line render. <laughs> we, need to, we need to address that too. So the code works. So ChatGPT uh, Chat did a good job. Um, is just user error. So I think negative 30 is going to tip it away from the wand, not back backwards like this. So negative 30 and the so this is the line renderer. So that piece of code that said like required component or whatever it's called required component type of line renderer. So that stuck it onto, oops, programming view here. Go back. So this line right here, requirement required component line renderer, when it stuck it onto this game object, it defaulted to line width one. So I think we can just drag this down to something much thinner. Al says, I said line, not vast beam. I don't know. Yeah, well, maybe vast beam is good. It's in fuchsia, so, um, which means there's some uh, texture that's not right, but we'll deal with that at some other point. Uh, Starlight's mentioning there's uh, Linux support. Uh, Tilt 5 supports Linux. I, almost a thousand percent sure Godot supports Linux. Because um, I was watching a tutorial on how to do Godot programming and uh, they're like, be careful, it uses Linux backslash uh, conventions. Uh, you can uh, you can use uh, Tilt 5 on the Steam Deck. We don't have the uh, support for um, what do they call it Proton yet because there's just there's just some uh, some quirks to getting the firmware. I think it's downloading the firmware into the headset. Uh, okay, let's check this out and see if the vast beam is gone.
Yeah, that's better. So you can see I'm, I'm moving this cube around the scene. Not moving the player yet. That line is very, very thin. I think it could be a little bigger. Oh, uh, DRMR says, uh, Godot 4 library says it doesn't do Linux yet. Oh, I guess that probably makes sense because there's probably a different native you know, interface for Linux versus Windows. Oh, that's sad. We also support Android. I don't know what Godot's support for Android's like. Uh, let's make this line a little bit bigger. Went to a vast beam to a thin little hair. All right, I'm not gonna obsess on the line too much. I just kind of like it. Um, So now, I think I'm going to turn the mesh renderer off on the cube. So now the cube is transparent. So it's, I'm going to take the box glider off too. So it's basically a, an empty game object now. Yeah, Starlight said you may need a powered hub for a uh, Steam Deck. We've had mixed results. I'm not quite sure um, why that is. It's it's possible that it's not necessarily the power. It could be the uh, signal integrity. We have such a thin cable, and if inside of things like laptops and I don't know what it looks like inside the Steam Deck. If there's just a little bit of loss, sometimes things get a little flaky. And when you put a, a hub in between, it's just kind of like a reconditions the signal. We have some new cables that we're going to provide pretty soon that use micro coax in them that are really long and very low loss. <laughs> Oddly, it's almost tempted back into Windows. You could always dual boot. Uh, okay, uh, let's figure out how to get the player moving. So the, they're calling it the blaster. I always thought it was a ship. Does anyone in the chat know the original centipede, what it was that, um, what the lore was behind the, uh, the ship looking thing. Uh, so on Blaster, I see it's got some a bunch of 2D things like 2D sprite and rigid body and whatnot. And then there's a Blaster script. I looked at this earlier and this looked really straightforward. So inside here, when it wakes up, it it goes and it grabs the rigid body and the renderer and colliders and all kinds of stuff. And it moves itself to a spawn position. That's cool. And then update loop. So update, every time there's a new frame, it executes everything in update. So what this is doing is it's just getting uh, Unity's default input axis for horizontal and vertical. and it is storing it into a vector two direction. Oh, nice, they're doing fixed update. Uh, so in fixed update, they're taking the direction Yeah, they're moving the character Okay, this makes sense. Um, since it's using the keyboard, it's incrementing or decrementing the uh, player position depending on what the direction is um, being input from the keyboard. A little bit of logic for respawning. Update color. 
and death animation. Uh, so it's playing a sound and it's instantiating a player death prefab. It might be fun for us to uh, do some particle effect when we blow up. Uh, Brittany says, I don't think it had lore. Centipede had a sequel, Millipede. This could be your opportunity to intru introduce lore in the hot anticipated third game in the series, Nanopede. Oh, I like it. Um, maybe we need the interstitial like they had in Ms. Pac-Man where they're like, you know, they meet and they bump and... Wasn't that the first game that actually had a story behind it? Or was it the original Pac-Man, I don't remember, that had the interstitial scene. Uh, so I think all we have to do is uh, we can do a public game object and we'll call it target. So that's in the editor, since this is public, we'll be able to drag that cube basically that we were moving around with the wand and we'll use that to move the the little sprite character around the uh, blaster <laughs> Moki wants a pop quiz I may have to run off I forgot to get some items from around the house I've been doing uh, pop quizzes on my previous streams. I don't. Is there anything close by I can grab? Hmm. All right. Let me uh, let me get the character moving around, and then I'll run off really fast. I probably have to run upstairs and grab something off my desk. There's plenty of junk in the house for pop quizzes. One D it. Still waiting for her to speak English. Uh, are you saying that uh, all this Unity stuff is not making sense? Uh, okay. Uh, so now we're going to bring in that game object and uh, into this public variable. And from this, we'll be able to get the X and Y position of it right here. So, so up here, when the script uh, script wakes up, it gets the rigid body. So the rigid body is what moves the the sprite around or this this object. And so right down here, after all of this calculation here, which is finding the delta when you hold the key down how much it should move up and down left and right it just puts the position in here so I think we can get rid of this because and we can get rid of this because we're not going to use the keyboard anymore and uh, I think I can do this calculation just in fixed update so fixed update comes at a regular clock tick versus update up here comes once a frame uh, no no I just want to update during the frame we might get weird juddery stuff if I do it in fixed update so I'm gonna bring this we're gonna move the rigid body of the blaster here um, how do I want to do this? Uh, it's a vector too, so it's x and y. New vector 2, I think I can do this. I'm not looking forward going to Godot, because I did look at a tutorial on how to get C-sharp running in Godot. And it was like 30 minutes of like setting up 
all kinds of environmental settings to, to make it go. And so Godot uses Python basically for its scripting language, which uh, I never really liked Python, all of the white space stuff. Uh, Brittany says, it made me sad that Valve didn't carry on in the AR direction, but I'm so glad you carried on the torch. Yeah, I mean, it's been like 10 years I've been working on this and it's gotten really good. And like with the resources of Valve, this could have been out years ago. And um, but we got there. And, you know, and frankly, like everyone went through their VR craze. So maybe the timing is just better right now. People that get their Tilt 5 system like it a lot. So I think, I feel like we're just on the edge of where it can be a big thing. Chris says, just say no to the snake. Not sure what that's, what's that's about. What did I call it up here? Target. Um, so I can go target dot transform. So that's its location and I should be able to go X dot X. No, transform pos dot position. Sorry, it's position in the world dot X. So far so good. And then it's Y position. I think it was X and Y is the Oh yeah, it it was X and Y up here. Oh, Chris is like the snake, Python, yes, yes. Oh, sorry, I lost context there for a second. Al says, if you use C Sharp in an environment editor already on your machine, turning out on in Godot, Godot, <laughs> to wake up. It's much easier. Tag Media says, I'm honestly surprised Valve chased VR trend. They aren't usually the type. Uh, them not pursuing AR was uh, their loss and your win. Yeah. I mean, if, if we can get this off the ground, it could be uh, uh, pretty lucrative for the entire team and everyone involved. And, you know, frankly, Valve you know, their DNA is hardcore gaming. They didn't get it. Even though so many people inside Valve would just come hang out and play the AR uh, prototypes, they still like, yeah, but how do we do Counter-Strike Go on this? And it's like, that's not the point. It's not the point. This is like Guitar Hero, right? Or Wii Sports. It's the thing that you do on Friday night with your friends. Mm, I think this will work, I think, knock on wood. So uh, we're going to be moving the sprite just exactly where that target is. Right. Oh. oh, 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 it didn't work. It didn't work. But there's a reason. Uh, because I didn't assign in the editor, I didn't assign the pointer. Yeah, Chris, uh, JRPGs and dungeon crawlers would be sick on the system. Uh, so I forgot to assign the game object right here. I think I need to move the camera a little bit or the game board. I'm going to do that because I don't think you get to see the bottom of the game board too well. I'm going to move it. So I'm going to do a, a quick recalibrate of the of Mixcast. So this is uh, Mixcast. I opened up the control panel up here. So in Mixcast, this is all the webcams. 
uh, on your system. So I've got two active right now. And you can calibrate them to the game board. So I just shoved the game board back a little bit. Do a calibration. And it fi finds the edge of the board and that's uh, where it's gonna do the compositing. So we can apply that. And then you can set up a bunch of different virtual cameras and you can click through them. Uh, so you can do have cameras set up all around your, your table and, and do you know, different angles. I'm lazy today and only have one webcam set up. Uh, Chris says, I'd love to see more of the old arcane, arcade games in AR, especially vector stuff. I agree. I want to do Tempest. Have to do Tempest someday. Uh, MSMMR1982 asks how I'm doing. I'm doing great. It's the weekend. Love it. I don't have to do spreadsheets and all that stuff. I get to do just fun stuff. Uh, I love Centipede. That's a good idea for Tilt 5. It's going to work right. Thank you. Um, says keep up the good work. Thanks for stopping by. Um, yeah, I think the sad thing about this is I can't release this because it's, you know, not licensed to us. But maybe someone will be inspired and they'll make their own non-infringing Centipede-like game. Chris says, send it to Jeff Minter. Uh, doesn't have near, Centipede doesn't have enough llamas in it. Oh, darn it. Don't, I started this again. I shouldn't have started the editor. I have to assign the target that we're moving around with the wand. So I have to drag that into there. Hey, it's the Taylor and Amy show. They're saying uh, we need to do a Scope Trex um, plugin. Oh, that's weird. Uh, you guys can't see it. I can just barely see it off in the dots at the top of the game board. But the. Uh, moving left and right. I can see it way at the top of the game board. So I did something wrong. It's reacting. Hmm. Oh, someone's suggesting uh, 3D Tetris. That would be really fun be fun to use the wand to do Tetris. So it probably in 3D it'd probably be a very um, productive way to move around. You could probably learn to to rotate your piece and then pull the trigger to drop it really fast instead of having to like uh, gimbal something around with buttons. So what did I do wrong? <laughs> I'm going to turn the uh, cube back on. It's possible I'm stuck behind a collider, actually. Because there are, as I was looking at this earlier, all right, first I'm going to turn the cube back on so we can see where the wand is. But I was looking at these. There's these barriers. So I may not be able to. I might be bouncing outside the uh, play space and not getting back in. Because it looked to me like I was stuck up against the top edge of the board and the little dots, I could just see the player going back and forth. If you haven't uh, seen the scope tracks before, 
it's really cool. It emulates the Vectrex and you hook it up to an oscilloscope. I'm going to turn off this barrier also just to see what happens. Yep, yep, that's what it was. It was behind the barrier. Uh, and if you all haven't checked out the Amy and Taylor show, you should go check them out. They're pretty awesome. Uh, they do lots of retro shenanigans. They wrote me into something that's going to be pretty fun. I don't know when that's going to drop, but we were at the Vintage Computer Festival. And uh, there's uh, lots of shenan shenanigans were being had. Sorry, a little distracted here. I'm going to turn the cube back off. So, why am I spawning back there and being stuck behind <laughs> the collider? Oddly says asteroids on it was phenomenal. Must be talking about Vectrex. Oh yeah, yeah, he was. I love my Vectrex. It, although I think it needs a little bit of a capacitor rework. It, the audio is really howling uh, from all the noise of drawing the vectors. accidentally turned off the target, not the mesh renderer, to hide the cube. Oops. Bashed into the microphone. Yeah, I'm stuck back there. Must be something about startup. It's getting... At startup in that script, it must be somehow back there. So I want to use the rigid body because I want to collide with things and not be able to move through them. I'm debating whether I should just put it right where the wand colli collision is, but I think that'll just force me to clip right through. Yeah, it's, that's, that wouldn't be good. Set spawn position. Al says there's a kit to stop the uh, hum on the Vectrex. I'll have to look into that. I'm sure it's... I probably have enough stuff in inventory. All right, uh, everyone was clamoring for me to do a uh, Q&A session. This is where you have to figure out what the device is that I'm holding up and see whoever can type it first, but uh, I'm going to have to run off and get it. I don't know what it is. I'm going to go find something. So one moment, please.
All right, I'm back. I'm back. All right, I ha got three items. For some of you, these will probably be pretty easy. Um, I didn't have a lot of time to go dig to find some really weird stuff. But I'll, I'll start with this one. It was just sitting on my desk. <laughs> People are trying to guess what's back here. Actually, um, that'll, that'll be the long-term uh, thing that you need to guess. It's not an Okadata printer. You have to keep guessing. It's pretty rare. I'll move to the side so you can see it. I know it's not enough resolution for you to read the uh, the badge on the front. All right, here we go. Get your typing fingers ready. Um, I'm going to hold this up and see who can guess it first. It's a circular thing. It's metal. Has some wires on it. Up, oh, pale, pale blue got it. A VCR head. Yep, and Bobcat was right. Precisely a VHS head. Nope, not an Epson printer. Not an Apple printer. Much, it's very old. So uh, I repaired an old mag, I think it was Magnavox. Yeah, it was a Magnavox box, um, VCR because I wanted to have Magnavox Odyssey 1, uh, Odyssey 2, some of the Odyssey um, Pong clones, and a Magnavox old school VHS with um, the separate tuner and receiver just kind of all as one system and so I got this this first unit and it was really a mess all the capacitors had leaked it wasn't working very well and I started replacing capacitors got it working uh, pretty decently but I just couldn't get it to uh, to look right so and then it broke a gear in it because the gears were really um, fragile after so many years and then I got another unit which had all kinds of other problems and I suspected that it was the head so I pulled the head apart and looked under the microscope and the little heads, there's two of them on this one they're, they seem to be ceramic, probably a ferrite or something and it was mostly cracked off so I was able to transplant from the really junky one onto the the first one that I fixed with all the capacitors and moved the uh, the the gear over for the the loading mechanism for the tape which promptly broke the gear again and then I had to fortify it all and make it super strong that gear but I got it going it was a lot of work oh the chat's asking if I have any beta heads I have some beta machines I've been getting into doing the old uh, VTRs that were real to real recorders so I have one of those I restored recently all right let's get back to coding here I gotta figure out how I'm ending up outside of the play area spawn position Private. Where is spawn position? Where is that getting set? Is it in the editor? Can I see it? know where Qu 
quadrant says I'm a little quiet. Um, um, well, I probably can't do any better today uh, for the audio level unless I talk really close to the microphone. I'll try to talk louder. Okamo says, spawn position is being set in awake to the transform of the object. Oh, that's right. Okay. And when I respawn, I go back. Okay. That makes sense. So there must be something about kind of startup. So my target is inside the play area at, at startup. Wand is there. Is there something in Raycast controller? So object to move only gets set when I collide with something. And I thought this was going to be easy. So I'm going to start it without the glasses tracking the board or anything and go look in the editor. And there it goes. It just pops up here. And my cube goes up there. I should do is to add a little logic to the uh, um, the blaster script so if it ever is outside of the play space um, it just directly moves it back in because uh, as I think about this there could be all kinds of weird startup things like the wand you know, ray casts and hit something kind of outside the game space and then all of a sudden you're stuck outside the game space just because of some edge condition. So why don't I do that? So these barriers are negative 21 in the X, positive 21 in the X, negative 21 in Y, positive 21 and negative 10. So we want to stay within negative 10 and negative 21 for sure. Now the chat's talking about uh, hold my beer. I don't know. What did I do? I've, I've definitely said hold my beer many a time. Ooh. So 
sorry, I'm just thinking uh, what's the graceful way to pop back into the uh, spawn position if there's gonna is if there's any kind of weird kind of oscillations I can get going if I'm like pointing off the board and it just keeps spawning. Anthony asked, wasn't Centipede programmed by a woman? Yes, um, we had a really fun uh, conversation with her on Twitter. She's not doing any video game programming these days. Uh, so transform dot position dot x is greater than equal to what was that? It was twenty one. Or should be or yeah what I'm gonna do if it's less than equal to maybe less than I don't know where the edges of the collider are actually in game space negative 21 Or was it negative ten? If greater in the y direction, negative ten. Or less than. Twenty one Oop, I need some more brackets. Yeah, what's the chances I have all my boundaries right? probably pretty low, huh? So it was, y was negative 10 and 21. Negative 10. Don't care about that one. Care about that one, because we got to keep the, uh, the ship right down in here. 21, negative 21. I'll just move it back to the spawn location. So flip-flop this around. So this is what I'm trying to do. Maybe I should do that after I move, just in case somehow I clip through. Get rid of some of this other junk too. I don't think I need fixed update anymore. Oops. Let me put 
fun. Oh, this is great. Oh yeah, this works. And I can't go outside of the uh, play space. I don't like this angle. This angle is too much. Um. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, let's go to the big screen here. So I'm going to try to reach over and hit the fire button. Those freaking spiders. Excellent. Tag Media, was the pre precursor to the TIL-5 wand your motion actuated half-life crowbar controller? No, so that, I put that together originally. Uh, Valve wanted me to try to get some like kind of viral hype with hardware uh, maker types. And so they're like, go make some wacky videos related to Valve just to like get some attention. And then we'll try to recruit some of those people. So. We did a bunch of things. It was pretty fun. Uh, ben Krasnow, I think, had joined already, or just about had joined. Uh, Mighty Ohm, Jeff Kaiser, Alan Yates, Monty Goodson, and uh, we made all kinds of wacky videos. Yeah, I was playing pretty good. I don't like the angle of the of the. Uh, the ray cast. Now I'll, I'll show you something kind of cool in Tilt 5. You can you can be using the application and you can change things in real time and, and be watching right from the editor. So I'm just changing this this value. Yeah that's pretty comfortable feeling. So about 55 seems to be a good angle. I should be watching the chat to learn all about Python since it's going to be probably in my future a lot. All right, uh, that's cool. So we've got that piece of it working. Um, when I was looking at this earlier, the bullets are a child of blaster and there's a script on that and that looked pretty straightforward. I think all we have to do is change this to use the trigger button instead of the spacebar. Uh, during the update loop is kinematic uh, and the fire button or the spacebar. So we're just going to, well first I'm going to make this multiplayer so you can have up to four. Here, I'll try to talk closer to the mic. Sorry about the low audio. Plus, I don't have the energy to yell too much. Um, so I'm going to make this multiplayer. And I'm going to need to do a couple things so that when I start instantiating multiple players, that they know that they're player one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to do public. Um, oh, shoot. Uh, oh, player index. That's what it's called. Uh, tilt five dot player index. And we'll call this player index. And so this will be settable within the editor, you know, let us select uh, between one and four. Because I need to know 
who is uh, pulling the trigger for each of the little ships that we put in there. So here we can get rid of this, which is looking at the keyboard input. And we're going to go tilt 5 dot input dot try get trigger and then it's tilt 5 dot controller index dot right hand oh I'm doing this wrong that's not the first thing um, it's out a floating point value of trigger value so I'm making a new float called trigger value it comes out of this till 5 function we're going to do the right hand controller good night ULF <laughs> now that I still don't know if that's uh, your name or if I'm pronouncing it wrong oh uh, Al that's cool um, let one of the players be the spider oh that could be really mean with the uh, wand because you definitely have to slow down the spider so that it doesn't move instantly with the uh, the wand that'd be brutal but that would be kind of interesting uh, we can explore that and see if it's any good Uh, someone's asking if any other classic stuff's been ported over to Tilt 5. If you go to our Discord, I know there's some folks that ported stuff over to our system. I don't recall uh, what got ported over. I don't hang out in Discord too much because it sucks up too much of my time. And then uh, we have our labs page on the Tilt 5 website where there's a lot of experimental stuff but uh, we can't really put up anything that violates a copyright. Oh, nobody uh, says, oh yeah, and you could have another dimension makes the bugs jump. Well, it'd be kind of cool to allow your ship to have limited like jump ability. So you're firing and then maybe if you hit the one button, this button like right down here below the joystick where you quickly push, maybe quickly push up with the stick and you can jump up, but you kind of limit the number of times you can jump. We can explore that too. I want to try to add some particle effects or something or some voxels that come shooting out when you blow up to kind of take advantage of the 3D space. All right, let's get back to the trigger. So tilt 5, we're doing the right controller, and then we're going to do player index. This lets us um, determine which player is going to be firing on this particular ship. And then we can adjust it in the con uh, control panel, or I mean in the editor. And we're going to end it with uh, trigger value greater than uh, half range so it's an analog value coming out so if you put more than half range you'll be firing alright I must have a bracket wrong here there we go fingers crossed I have to remember um, I think this is going to work, but I have to remember to go back to the editor. And this is what I was talking about with the player index. So I have to set this to 1 on our current ship here. Oh, people are uh, kind of getting into this jump idea. Yeah, I wonder with the analog stick you have all eight directions we could add a velocity of like up and move to the left or up and move to the right that could be kind of interesting um, 
Yeah, I might try that. Let's see if I can fire from the trigger now. Spider. Oh, this is very, very playable. Ah, fucking spider. Sorry, I'm, I'm playing this too much. It's it plays really well. Um, that's good. Okay, that's awesome. So we have a playable game now. Um, I want to I want to try I want to try tipping the uh, the sprites up. So I, th I think I saw these were all prefabs. So if I find wherever those sprites are, prefabs, here they are. <clears throat> so we've got centipede segments, enemy death animation, fleas, mushrooms. Scorpion. We haven't even gotten to the scorpion yet. Spider. Spider death animation. Okay. I'm going to make a new script that keeps these things tipped up. Because um, when I was looking at this, you know, all the logic that moves these things around is based on 2D sprites and I, I think it'd be too much to change to try to get all of these, change all of that different logic of how the different things are moving around. So I think it'd be easier just to make a script to make this um, stand up. So let's call it sprite tip. Is the desktop audio too low so you can't hear the uh, the game? I can turn it up a little bit. How's that? Okay. All right. Um, I think this should be a pretty I want to maintain whatever rotation the game is doing, but I want to modify, I think it's going to be the Z, I think. Oh, Tag Media has said, uh, watching Centipede played on a table reminds me of the old martini cabs from back in the day. <laughs> Wonder if it'd be possible to implement a shader for a curved CRT effect. I think that would be pretty possible and it would be kind of fun too because like when you do the jump if we do the jump then you'd be kind of jumping out of the CRT I'm sure there must be shaders out there that um, do that already
Okay, um, we're going to do a new, I think I can do it in a new vector 3. Oh, new vector 3, uh, call it angles. We're going to take the angles. Oh, I don't have to say new vector. So I'm going to remember the original vectors, or angles, I mean, and then I'm going to transform new vector 3 I'm going to leave x the same and y the same, uh, and then z, I don't know, 45 degrees. <coughs> I should have had ChatGPT do this for me. So I put that on the centipede segments. So let's see if the centipede segments are tipped up. Oh, thanks, Twidge. Oh, ah. Uh, those are rotated 45 degrees all right but not not the right um, axis what did I do wrong oh it's the x-axis I need to do the x-axis uh, after I get this done uh, maybe we'll do another pop quiz pop quiz for everyone So Z and Y need to be correct, uh, the same, original, or whatever the game's deciding. And let's see if 45 degrees looks okay. Everyone keeps saying Odyssey cartridge. Is there an Odyssey cartridge in sight somewhere here? Okay, uh, let's give this a shot. Indeed is tipped 45 degrees, but it's tipped 45 degrees towards, so that it needs to be negative 45, I think. Good night, Keith. Good to see you. Yeah, there it is. It's the tip 45 degrees. Let's see what that looks like in the game. What did I do? yanked my cable out on the glasses. 
uh, Keith's in Ireland. I feel like these are moving a little faster than they normally uh, did in the arcade. Uh, sprite. So I can just add the sprite tip script to everything and it'll All these things will tip forward. I wonder if I can get ChatGPT to uh, look at the sprite texture and then extrude it too. That could be kind of cool. this to everything. Now the uh, the score is in screen space, so we need to fix that. So there's the screen space UI. We need to move this to world space. So this canvas right here, we have to go move that to world space. And then we have to do a bunch of scaling and positioning, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, aren't the sounds great in this? I'm sure they're totally ripped uh, from the game. So I need to get this scaled down enough, this canvas down enough that we can get it right onto the game board. Zero, 
this out so it's getting closer. Almost. Nah, it looks too small. That might be just about right. Uh, Jim said, asked if I can broadcast in 1080. I don't know. Um, I'm just using the default in OBS. Um, does anyone know OBS? Oh, the cats are excited. They're getting food. I just heard the feeder go off. Let's take a look and see if this UI works. If this works, then we'll do another pop quiz. Pop quiz. Yeah, that uh, UI just got perfect. Mm. It's going to be an interesting challenge uh, when I make this multiplayer. Mm. I'll have to go figure out where the score is. I want to die and make sure that the game over the game over looks okay. Yep. Yeah, so the suggestions maybe raise it in the Z. Yeah, maybe I, it needs to be a little bit taller in the Y. I'm not offended by the mushroom sticking through it. says looks just like the centipede that uh, he remembers. Yeah, it's it's a really good rendition. Um, so anyone's curious about playing with this, it's uh, the GitHub link is in the uh, the um, description below. UI manager script. Let's take a look at that because this is going to be important for scoring. <laughs> Chat says next, missile command. There was a, a follow on to missile command. I don't remember what it was. It was an Atari game, but it was uh, on a sphere. Maybe that's what we need to do take advantage of the 3D ness. Tag Media. Hey Jerry, if I were to put out the coin to purchase Ben Heckendorn a T5, do you think you could get it to him? Uh, sure, uh, we could. Is he interested in doing something with it? Ha we can send, uh, we ship to 30 different countries and I, what is he, Wisconsin? I'm sure we can ship there. Uh, let's see. It's a good time to buy a TIL-5 system, especially a 2 and 3 player pack, because they're on sale for a little bit longer. And it keeps the lights on and keeps food on the table so I can keep uh, doing nerdy things. 
All right, I need to figure out how the score is calculated because we may want to have four scores. I think we do. If wow, this has got a lot in it. It has a high score table. Updates lives. Oh, this could be kind of complicated. Uh, so I have to duplicate some of this stuff for each player. I was hanging out with, uh, with Ben at uh, Vintage Computer Festival a few weeks ago. It was really fun. The Midwest show is really amazing because it's huge. It's like a swap meet plus a vintage computer show plus there's like space to like hang out afterwards. So we were drinking and causing chaos until two in the morning every night. Oddly asked, is anyone using Tilt 5 for teaching kids? Yes, a ton of units are in schools now, which is cool. There's companies using our system with their dedicated software. I don't know if it's been posted on Twitter yet, but there was a public video that one of these companies that's using our system to do anatomy and science and all kinds of stuff just went live. And I know our marketing people were jumping up and down, um, excited that they get to post it. Oh, Eric had an interesting idea for multiplayer. You could have a shared board with centipedes coming from the center of the board towards the perimeter. End players would have to be placed equally around the board. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, that could be kind of cool. I have a multiplayer pinball game that I've been kind of dabbling with too, which is two players on one side of the, the game board and two on the other. And then you each have two flippers that you control and then there's two flippers in the middle and there's a drain path in the middle and a drain down w the ones that you control but the two flippers in the middle you control uh, uh, each of you control so it's collaborative and then on the other side of the table it's exact it's kind of a mirror image hey George I haven't seen you in a long time uh, I've got the famous fat man in here it's awesome to uh, hear from you uh, we should uh, do a Skype call sometime and catch up. It's been, what, 15 years? And you can tell me everything I'm doing wrong with audio in games. I gotta figure out how the score is getting updated. Ah, the chat's going crazy for George Singer. Yesterday we had Bill Hurd in here too. It was a, uh, it's an all-star cast of uh, celebrities dropping in here, which is cool. I wonder. Uh, I wonder if the the Dart script is what's updating the score or if it's um, each of the uh, each of the game objects as they get hit is updating the score I have to do a little hunting around I don't know how much more I can go because I'm really hungry I may have to stop for a while I think I think what I want to do is at least get multiplayer in here so that up to four ships can be in at the same time. On collision. No, it doesn't. It doesn't seem like the bullets are causing the score to happen. 
So let's take a look at the flea and see if the flea has any special scripts. Flea script. Uh, here it is, here it is. So each of the prefabs has a script that's keeping the score. <laughs> Chat's telling me to go eat. All right, this is going to take some deeper digging. Um, yeah, that's. I'm going to have to change this so when the bullet hits, we're going to have to identify whose bullet it is, and then I'm sure in each one of these scripts it goes off to the score. And updates the score. If take damage, if health equals zero. Oh, there's a game manager. So game manager, increase score points. So wherever this game manager is, we're going to have to update the game manager to understand player two, three, four. <laughs> Railbird says, order some pizza. Make sure you get enough for all of us. I totally do that. I would totally do that. We have uh, regular happy hours at our office. We should do a game jam sometime. And for those of you that can get there, we should just order lots of beer and pizza for a couple days and try to build some stuff. All right. Um, Q&A time. Q&A. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Um, so get your typing fingers ready. Let's see who can figure this out the fastest. Guys, ready? Y'all watching the screen? I'm going to hold something up. For some of you, this might be easy, and others, you'll have no clue, I'm sure. All right, here we go. What do you think this is? It's got some little pegs down here. Let's see if I can get it close enough. Will there be math? The question is, will there be math? No, no math on this. So in thought vacuum capacitor? Nope, this is plastic. It can't hold a vacuum. Uh, Eric says variable inductor. Um, Nothing variable about it. Uh, magic eye tube, nope. Yeah, it's a lot of adjust adjustable inductors. It is an inductor, but what does it go to? A plasma something. An inductor wrapped around a test tube, nope. It's kind of obscure. It must be a flux capacitor, some kind of solenoid. Nope. There's only two wires that hook up to these pins down here. A magnetic pickup, that's closer. It is a, uh, it does magnetically, ah, Sean got it. It's for a grid dip meter. So a grid dip meter is an oscillator that you plug this into and it resonates at a frequency and they have a knob that you can tune the frequency and uh, then you can couple it into another coil and you can find out what frequency couples the strongest before they had uh, fancy equipment for measuring LC tank circuits you would use this grid dip meter and when the grid uh, current would dip down, it was made with a vacuum tube and the grid in the vacuum tube, the current would dip down. Uh, that's where your tuned circuit was most resonant. 
Eric Carr says, old school VNA. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, I have a couple grid dip meters and I pull them out every once in a while. They're super handy because you can just couple into something without um, influencing that circuit too much. I even use it on, on modern electronics. Okay, let's make this multiplayer-ified as fast as we can, then I'm going to eat. And it's a pretty good stopping point. Uh, I might start the stream back up later tonight because I have my voxel zombie game that the team wants me to get done before I take my trip to uh, Taipei and Tokyo and Seoul, which is going to be a long trip. <laughs> Someone said, Dip, you're getting me hungry. It's true, I'm makes me more hungry too. All right, uh, let's multiplayerify this really quick. So I'm going to duplicate, or this is kind of messy how I'm doing it. I should have done a cleaner implementation. I'm going to duplicate the wand, and then I'm going to come over to the tilt five. Oh, and I'm going to duplicate the target. It's going to be player two target. I'll just do two just to, to show how it's done. So now we go to Tilt 5 Manager. We're going to select player two. Tom asks, are you about to do local multiplayer? Yeah, yeah. Our system is really easy for doing local multiplayer. No calibrations or anything required. You just, uh, right out of the box, our system, every game is spectatable. So if it's even a single player game, you can just plug multiple headsets in. Even on Android, you can plug multiple headsets in if you have a hub or an Android device that has multiple connections. And uh, player one gets to play on a single player game and then player two, three, four can watch. And then if the game designer adds just a little bit of logic, you can have local multiplayer and everything lines up uh, nicely without any thought from the developer. Nobody says uh, messy implementation beats no implementation. I might come back and clean this. Like when we first put this player two target in or player one target in, I'm like, I don't really want to do it this way, but I'm going to do it kind of the naive way to speed things up. Now I'm paying the price. Um, but it was helpful doing it that way because we had all that trouble figuring out why the player, the, the ship was outside the game space. Uh, so on the player two wand, I need to assign player two target. So player two wand moves that target. And then we're going to duplicate the blaster up here. So we duplicate that. So now we have, we'll call this player two. And then we're going to take player two's target and put on here. So now player two will be moving that blaster around. There's a non-zero chance that this game manager thing that we discovered um, is not going to behave nicely with player two. Um, and then the dart, which is the weapon, we are going to, remember I put in the player index, we're going to set that to player two, so player two's wand can now fire that dart. I think that's it. Oh, well, no, 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 no. Um, I got a player two. I need to put its wand on the tip of the wand in the tilt five manager. All right, now I have to dig up another pair of glasses.
do you think it's worth uh, having me do this kind of porting kind of nonsense and, and stream it? Is it worth watching? Hi, Beta. Good to see you. Okay, so this should be one of the players. in the SDK if you just let the wand sit too long. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not making sense. I apologize. We have a bug in the SDK. If the wand just sits on the table without the glasses seeing it for a while, sometimes it has trouble reacquiring the wand. All right. So this should be player two. I have it highlighted here. This should be player twos. Player one. Uh, difficult to do. Usually I have a, a a microphone stand with uh, another pair of glasses. Player one is here. Let I don't know which glasses player one and two. So let's set up player one and two. So I'm a hundred percent sure. Okay, we're gonna call this one. That's why I unplugged one pair of glasses. So I'm gonna set a name. Glasses one. So right now in our control panel, glasses are alphabetical, so you can just label them A, B, C, or 1, 2, 3, whatever you want in the friendly name. And that's the player number they're going to be. Glasses. Make sure all the wands are on. Thank <laughs> you. 
one of the glasses was pointing in the air or something. That was probably the, the challenge. Well, sweet. Uh, now we have to dig into the game manager. And I think, I think we do that later because I'm hungry. Wait, what? What happened to uh, my headshot? Oh, because that got big for some reason. Oh, how funny. When I, I get obsessed by hitting Control S all the time, and if I hit Control S inside OBS, it maximizes it. Anyway, I think I'm going to call it there for now. I might be uh, on later. We'll be working on uh, zombie, and then I'll just keep chipping away at at this because I want it to uh, to work just so we can play it around the office. Oh, Eric was asking if the the text looked mirrored to me. Did the game look mirrored? Reverse text to you. It looks reverse to you. I mean, to be honest, um, good question. I I didn't. I don't think I was actually reading the uh, the text. Text is right. Oh, it is reversed here. Why is it reversed? Hmm. Uh, it could be an OBS thing, too. Um, let me take a look. Let me pull up Mixcast, the Mixcast preview. Yeah, folks were complaining about that. Um. Oh. Sorry, I'm trying to uh, get in here and maximize Mixcast. So this is actually the output from Mixcast. Here. So this is what Mixcast looks like when it's running in the background. So that's right. It must be OBS that's flipping something around. Hmm. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll look into that next time I set up Mixcast. I mean uh, OBS. But yeah, I gotta get some food. So uh, thanks, thanks everyone for hanging out with me. It wasn't as uh, disastrous as a few days ago, so this turned out pretty good. And the game is really, really, really playable. Like I think it's, it's probably as good as a trackball, honestly. Um, I've never played Centipede on any game console uh, using joystick that was satisfying. So that's cool. Uh, be sure to check out tilt5.com, buy your group pack, play some games. Um, thanks for hanging out. And thanks uh, for the Unity programmers that helped me solve some of my problems. There were a couple little bonehead things that I, um, I just wasn't seeing, but you guys caught it.